at the time being. I um, would like first time when I arrived in Taiwan to learn Buddhism. The first book about Buddhism is Understanding Buddhism. It has helped me a lot in what part? It helps me to build my confidence to give me a sense of purpose, a goal of what I should do, uh, work towards. So how I uh, proceed with this path, uh, how I guide myself uh, going into the future where I would serve all sentient beings. What kind of attitude should I have when I'm doing this to benefit all beings? So the content of this uh, book, Understanding Buddhism, talks about Shaimuni Buddha as well. And I also read about Shaimuni Buddha's chronicle, his um, biographies. And every time I read his biography, I, uh, you know, my tears drop uh, naturally. Like it just, there are many times when I read it, tears came down from my face because I. Um, felt the, the greatness from his uh, biographies because as a successor to a throne he could have enjoyed the wealth the powers from his fathers and his family he would success his father succeed his father to not just you know, rule over the, his kingdom also, per the prophecies in his um, era, there were a lot of uh, Brahmin who prophesied he would uh, have a huge influence over the whole India and the world. But as you can see, he has not chosen this path to success, succeed his father. He rather live under uh, a tree every day, sleep under the tree, and get by by asking for alms from the common folks so that he could have all used all the energy to focus on benefiting the sentient beings to contribute to all beings to this society to this country to this world that's where his greatness came from that's what that's why he is great in this man in this sense he didn't ask for any return, anything in return. Therefore, from the uh, original vow, the sutra of original vows of Siddhikabha Bodhisattva, Dijang Bodhisattva, he has made a vow that uh, when he mentioned about Buddha, Shaimbeni Buddha, the Buddhas of ten direction always praised Buddha about one thing. What is it? He could be a Buddha in this era, in this world, Saha world. It's not easy to be a person like a Buddha in this world. Because a lot of Bodhisattvas, it's common uh, knowledge among them, they seen, observe this world. Very, very hard to be ed uh, educated back to good. It's very easily fallen into the, uh, uh, bad deeds. So Buddha himself is not uh, did not give us give up on us. He used all his energy, all his wisdom, to help us to return back uh, to goodness, so that we don't fall back into that suffering cycles. That is why he is so great, and this is hard. This kind of teacher, this kind of person with such compassion, is hard to find. Especially uh, when we talk about people of the young people of current times we should have a we should read it in depth his chronicles of Shaman Buddha and his biologies uh, biography sorry if you read it in depth you really understand who this person is and what he did how much he gave up and for what then you will naturally have tears flowing out because we understand how hard his work is it's how Thankless is work is sometimes. If we reflect back on ourselves, 
you know, sometimes when we met some obstacles in our life, when we try and do something good or try and do something useful, we might met some obstacles, issues, and then we felt very, you know, sad, not being understood. But if you look at Buddha's time, he has to face a lot of humiliation as well. There was a person who swear at him actually, not just go swear with all the words, dirty words. But he just sat there, not responding, not just not responding, he's smiling when this um, proceeding, this swearing is going on. He didn't even have a sense of anger in his face. A lot of people, when they got humiliated like that in the face, in front of everyone, usually they would just go to the kitchen and get a knife in retaliation, you know, trying to tell them to stop. So that is why, that is another aspect of Buddha. Why is he the Buddha and why is he great? So those are the examples we should know. Uh, and I'm very interested in this as well, myself, when I started learning. Uh, I went back to Indonesia, uh, this uni, to give uh, talks, Lama talks. And I always bring up understanding Buddhism, this uh, uh, Buddhism. Because to introduce who Shai Merdeba is, to understand who this person is, so that we can felt his work, how it benef his work benefits us. So if I learn from Shai Merdeba today, uh, what we need to know, what is the biggest thing we should learn from him? What is the biggest trait we should inherit from Buddha's example? Tolerance, able to take in all things, good and bad, just like an ocean. Like ocean, he can take in all kinds of streams, water, uh, let, let, be it rain, be it mountain streams, be it sewage, everything. He can take in everything. His heart is big. And this is what Shaiman Buddha let us experience a person of that scale in heart. When you have this broad heart, big heart, uh, able to take in anything, tolerate everything, more than tolerate, beyond tolerate, take in everything, then your life will be more positive, more, um, more positive, uh, more active. You will not felt depressed because of few issues, problems. There is impossible to have 100% smooth path on your life, not even Buddha. But how you treat these issues is important. You must remember my word today. Whatever you face today, whatever situation you face today, if you have the right attitude, if you have an attitude of taking in with a big heart and understand it, you have, you can convert this issue into your motivation, into your energy, so that you can reflect, you can fix where it goes wrong in yourself and others, and then it becomes a positive outcome for you. So that's what we should learn from Shaimani Buddha able to take in everything, a big heart, to tolerate and to take in everything. Every All kinds of people, 